So last season, Olaf Yuri Socher's fifth year with Alta IF saw them conquer a domestic double in Norway by winning the Elita Sedian and the Norwegian Cup. That achievement automatically grants them a playoff round qualifying match for the UEFA Champions League. But unfortunately for Olaf Fury, their youth prospect turned star player in Wang Weipeng has been dropping hints all of last season that he wants to leave the club. Something that became even more obvious when his agent refused to negotiate with Alta to secure a new deal. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what a nervous breakdown looks like. Deciding to try and profit from moving the youngster, Olaf Fury puts out feelers across the various leagues, and while waiting on bids for his star player, he did ensure to secure the services of Ola Christensen and Christopher Paulson from their loans with the club last season, along with officially welcoming goalie Patrick Knudsen. To prepare for the Elita Sedian and UEFA Champions League qualifying legs in the upcoming months, Ola Fury's off-season business would keep him busy, as he sold players such as Harald Jorgensen, Martin Schulstad, and Enoch Mim who aren't capable to play at the necessary level moving forward, along with bringing in lone niece Karen Lamont for the first half of the season as a backup goalie, and center back Eduardo Bedeschi from Sassuolo. Along with those loans, Alta also acquired free transfers Paul Fortuny, Ali O'Neill, Romain Bertolin, Rodrigo Rodriguez, and Thorstein Hallam. It's during that time in which a deal for Wang Weipeng is finally accepted as Wei Peng is set to move to the Premier League for 7.25 million. It was Stoke City who ponied up for Wei Peng after winning promotion into the Prem. Yeah, but could he do it on a cold rainy night in Stoke? The Wei Peng transfer funds gave Alta some options in the market, and so Olafiri began to focus on making the necessary moves to replace his team's prize prospect. First, Alta would bring in building blocks for the future with Colombian winger Alan Mora and South Korean Choi Sung Gyeong. But the two big replacements Ola Fury was looking for came from within the Elita Sedian, as he'd pay 3.5 mil and 7 mil respectively for Volarenga's two best players in attacking midfielder Glenn Arnegvite Vuyen, who we're just gonna call Glenn AK Vuyen moving forward to make it easier on all of us, and then Volarenga's young striker Murten Sponos, who just happened to lead the entire Elita Sedian last year in goals scored. Alta are considered to be the favorites for retaining the Elita Sedian title and they immediately will be put to the test by Viking, who have finally returned to the top level of Norwegian football after a nightmarish multiple years in the Obosligan. Morten Sponis welcomes them back by scoring a goal in the first 20 seconds of the game. Outstanding. Well, this opens the floodgates as Henry Ofia and Tony Brudal proceed to score within minutes of each other as Alta leads 2-1. Five minutes later. Depression! Volarenga was next on the list, and while the two former star players weren't on the field, Alta still managed to handle business with a 2 0 win. So losing a key defender leads to a draw against Tomsu, and as March is wrapping up, Olafuri gets the news that Glenn AK will be out for another month or so due to a groin strain. This is right around the transfer deadline, where Hikmat Nazari is sold to Olesund, and Alta ends up getting a contingency plan for the midfield in Haro Tangen, who they get on loan from Molda FK with an option to buy if things work out. The transfer window wraps up and it's at this point where the season kicks into overdrive for Alta as Elite Sedian and Norwegian Cup fixtures will keep the team busy. A draw against Stabæk, followed by a close win against Songdal, are a good start but they get a tough draw in the first round of the Norwegian Cup against Buru Glimt where it takes extra time and a returning Martin Spunos to score the winning goal in extra time to get him through to the second round, where they'd face Stabæk once again. Something began to click here, as the team would go through the rest of April only surrendering one goal for the whole month as they won the remainder of their games, which included 3 more wins against Hoggesson and Escape Gun, a 2-1 win at the death against Lillistkum, and a 2-0 routing of Stabæk in the second round of the Norwegian Cup. Third-tier Vard Hoggesson would be Alta's next draw in the Cup, and they'd be swiftly dealt with to start the month of May in a 3-0 win thus drawing internal pain in their side odds VK as the 4th round matchup. But the unbeaten streak would continue through the remainder of May, routing Rosenborg with a 4-0 win, 
managing a clean sheet against Mion Dalen, finding their way to 3-2 victories against Sturm's Godset in Budu Glimt to continue their dominant run over the Elite Sedian. Because so far, in all of their competitions, they're just simply... Un the the a 1-1 draw against Odds BK to start June would serve as a background for things to come, as both teams would play one another days later in the Norwegian Cup in a game that saw Morten Spunas score within 19 seconds of the match, beating his 21-second record for the fastest goal in Alta IF history from the start of the year. Tomer Yosefi scored 12 minutes later to spoil the fun and brought this fourth-round matchup into extra time. But Breach Kittild and Marius Busca Larsen's goals in extra time would be enough to help seal the deal as Alta retained their unbeaten streak in all competitions and advanced to the quarterfinals of the Norwegian Cup. Spirits were high as a 3 1 win two weeks later over third tier Fredrikstad and a draw against IK Start took the unbeaten streak into July, where wins against Molda FK and Viking FK kept them undefeated for a total of 21 games in the year so far. 16 of them within the Elite Sedian. However, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. So, go figure that sad and beaten streak basically went to die against Komsu in a 2 1 loss in a game where Alta was listed as the home team in Komsu Stadium. That was filled mainly by Komsu fans. They really gotta start building that new stadium in Alta. But that streak does still have them in a great place in the Elite Sedian, and they're gonna need that form because the August transfer window has opened and their UEFA Champions League draw is finally here. And Alta's gotta go through either Dinamo Zagreb or Sheriff Tiraspol in order to get into the Champions League's massive group stage. A tough 1-1 draw to Volerenga after a missed penalty kick from Ola Christensen and an embarrassing loss to Songdal in their ground needs to get put in the rearview mirror almost immediately, because it would be Dinamo Zagreb that Alta would need to face in the two-leg playoff draw to get into the Champions League. And that first game would be all the way in Croatia. For the first time in their history, Alta AF made the walk under the nightlights in Croatia into that iconic Champions League anthem, and proceeded to hang tough during the first half with a nil-nil result, before proceeding the ball out in the second half in a way that blindsided the Croatian champions, as Anders Burset put his name in the history books by scoring Alta's first ever goal in the competition, and 15 minutes later, Morten Sponas capitalized with a second goal. The first leg saw a 2-1 win that would force the Croatians to not only fly beyond the Arctic Circle, but also have to fight uphill to keep their chances alive. Alta's rotation of their lineup against Stabak is still enough to get them a win and preserve the starting lineup for the return leg against Dinamo Zagreb in Tkomsu. The second leg would go in a similar manner as the first, as team captain Noah Nene and Murten Sponos scored early on and Zagreb could not make up the difference. The boys had done it. Olaf Fury Solskjaer and Alta IF are now headed to the UEFA Champions League group stages. This schedule is rough. At best, the team can maybe squeeze in on the playoff knockout round, but when you've got Manchester City, Juventus, Bayern Munich, and Napoli on the group stage schedule, you're just not gonna have a good time. But getting 14.6 million on the budget for qualifying for the group stages does alleviate that significantly. Anyways, back to the Elite Sedian. Hoggison comes back from a 2-0 deficit against Alta to end the game in a draw, and as August gets wrapped up, Lillistgum, Stabek, and Odds BK are starting to make up ground in the title race. Speaking of Lillistgum, they are on the schedule for September twice within three days for both Elite Sedian and the Norwegian Cup semi-final, games that happen within five days of Alta's first Champions League matchup. The transfer window is mostly quiet, but foreign teams like FC Copenhagen and Schalke offer enough money for the services of Glenn Sigurd Brusgaard and Anders Burset to where Olaf Fury is content with selling both and settling for only bringing in Sebastian Sibulinsen on loan from Anders SEO in France due to his immersed versatility and experience at various levels of European football. The month of September and its loaded fixtures does start off in a challenging fashion as SK Braun manages a draw against Alta and their debut in the Champions League against Manchester City <laughs> 
goes about as well as expected. Well, at least some things are consistent. Several days later. A win against Lillestrøm in the Elite Serien does keep them 9 points ahead of the pack, but the Norwegian Cup semi-final matchup between the clubs proves to be a much tougher affair. As both sides find a goal in the first half of the game, there's a missed penalty kick, and the game goes to extra time. Alta and Lillestrøm also score in extra time, but neither side can find the winning goal to end it there. And so, Alta keeps the tradition going for the 6 years straight with penalty kicks, and given their winning streak in those over the past few seasons, I like their chances. A few minutes later... What a day! Well, anything can happen in penalty kicks, and thus, Alta was eliminated from the Norwegian Cup. Rosenberg only added to that pain days later by managing a 1-0 win in the Elite Setian against a rotated side, getting themselves into second place and only 6 points away from the league leaders. But that rotation was for a reason, as Alta made their way to Austria for their second Champions League group stage game against RB Salzburg and then proceeded to score two goals within the first 10 minutes of the game, getting their first ever Champions League win in history in the process. A game against Bjorn Dahlen followed to wrap up September, in which Harald Tangen got a hat-trick out of nowhere to secure a solid 3-1 win for the team to keep them ahead in the standings. God damn it! October would see the title race headed to the wire in these final five Elite Sedian games for the next two months. Alta would have to fend off both Rosenborg and Odds BK for the top spot, and losing their first game of that bunch against Strums Gottset after leading 1-0 in the first half wasn't an encouraging sign. But it also showed that Olafuri's rotations did pay off, as his main starting 11 managed to fend off Red Star Belgrade with two goals in the second half and win 2-1 in the Champions League group stage game. That momentum was then carried into the remainder of the month, as Alta dominated Budu Glimt at home with a 4-1 victory that featured Haro Tangen's second hat-trick of the season and a key 2-1 win against Odds BK at their own ground. Due to results going their way elsewhere, the victory against OzBK guaranteed that Alta IF will retain the Elita Sedian and have their playoff round qualifier spot for next season's Champions League as well. A lot of that work came on the back of an undefeated first half of the season and for Olafuri, this now allowed them to use the Elita Sedian as a means to sharpen his players for the bigger games to come in the Champions League. They'd fly off to Italy next to face one of the elites of world football in Juventus in the Champions League, and through sheer will, and a good amount of luck, they managed to come out of Allianz Stadium with a 1-1 draw that no one saw coming. Alta then wraps up the Elite Sedian with a draw against Molda FK and a loss against IK Start, but the end of year fixtures were still to come between AK Athens and Freiburg in the Champions League group stage, as Alta is off to Greece for the matchup against AK Athens first. Haro Tangen proceeds to pull off his third hat trick of the season, and Alan Moda adds a fourth goal to go with their 4 2 win. That win puts Alta at 10 points in the Champions League and right in the middle of the pack for a playoff knockout round spot. Although that's not a guarantee as of yet, because Freiburg has got next on the group stage matchups, and they're two points ahead of Alta in it. But due to their rock solid defense finding its form and Glenn AK Vuyen scoring the only goal of the matchup, Alta comes out victorious against the German side and with it, they secure a playoff spot in the Champions League. Success! But where exactly they will fall within the playoffs for the Champions League is yet to be seen, as they still have games in January against Bayern Munich and Napoli. While the 2028 season doesn't end like last year's domestic double season, the retention of the Elite Sedian title and the unexpected progress within the Champions League are encouraging signs for Alta IF, as Olaf Yuri Solskjaer is proving to be one of the greatest managers to come out of the country since, well, his distant cousin. Solid transfers, excellent player performances, all of it has gotten them this far. To add to the good news, plans are fully unveiled that Alta Stadium has been greenlit and will begin construction for about 5 million, as the club's coffers have more than enough to afford it. The ground is set to be ready for completion as of January 2030, so it only meant one more year in Tromsø before Alta IF could finally go home. Oh, 
Right, I knew I was forgetting something. The Norwegian Cup final? Get this. Lillestrøm lost it on penalties to Kristiansen, who are an Obosligan team, who also happened to get promoted this season to the Elite Serien. Huh. At least somebody else did a domestic double this year. 